Hi guys, Vince here. Today we're going to be talking about drilling and not just with any tools, micro tools, little miniature carbide drills. The machine we'll be using is the Tormach 1100MX. I'll go over some tips and tricks and things I've learned along the way. Let's get to it. We'll actually be using three different tools for this job. The first tool is a Harvey tool number 20157. It's a carbide drill with a step shank and it's 0.0157 diameter, which is roughly 1 64th. It has a 0.270 length of cut and is a 40 degree helix. The other drill we have is a Lakeshore Carbide 135 degree split point drill. It has a 15 degree helix. Its diameter is 1 32nd, so it's twice as big. However, it is a straight shank, and this does come into play later. Now the third tool is a Lakeshore Carbide center drill, and that's what we use to spot the holes. Spotting a hole for these small carbide drills I found was very important. These tools are made of carbide, so they're very rigid, but that also means they're a little fragile. So a good spot meant our drill went nice and straight every time. Before we get to the machining, I'd like to talk about one of the most important things you need to consider when running small tools like this. And that thing is runout. Runout is basically how much your tool wobbles as it moves around in a circle. Card here for the NYC CNC video on how to measure, check, and adjust your runout. One of the biggest things with these two tools was the shank diameter, and that played a big part in the runout. With the Harvey tool being a reduced shank with an eighth inch shank, it was much easier to find a collet that was gonna hold the tool nice and straight, and when I had to adjust the runout, I had a good amount of shank to tap it. With the Lakeshore Carbide straight shank, it was quite a bit harder to find a collet to hold that 132nd diameter drill, and I ended up breaking quite a few because I couldn't get the runout down. Next, it was time to run the Harvey Tool 15 thou carbide drill. We started by spotting that as well, and we only spotted to a depth of 2 thou, and that was plenty to make a nice little divot to guide the tool. For the first test, I actually went with the Harvey tool recommendations for its pecking, three times diameter, and then going to a two times diameter. My RPM is 10,000, again, max RPM, service feed of 40 feet per minute, plunge feed rate of five inches per minute for a feed per rev of five tenths. <laughs> it broke pretty fast. It's funny, you can't even see it, you can't hear it, it's just not there anymore. Alas, I had more tools, so it was time to go again. The second test, I lowered the plunge a little bit to 4.5 inches per minute for a feed per rev of 0 0.00045, and my pecking depth is pretty much one times the diameter of the tool. And that ran great, ran beautifully to a depth of, uh, I believe, quarter inch, which is Amazing for a tool that size. Next up, the Lakeshore Carbide 132nd Carbide Drill. And we faced it with the Superfly. And then we spot with the Lakeshore Carbide Center Drill at a depth of 5 thou. I tried to not use pecking because, you know, you gotta send it a little bit, right? Didn't work. And even though I lowered the feed per rev, and I believe this was 5 tenths per rev, that drill broke almost immediately. My second test, I tried to run it dry with peck, and also not a good idea. You cannot run these small drills dry. They definitely need well-aimed coolant. Now for my third test, I used pecking with around the same size as diameter. So I pecked in 37 thousandths. My spindle speed is 10,000 RPM. It's the max RPM for the 1100 MX, and that gives me a surface feet of 81 feet per minute with a plunge feed rate of 10 inches per minute, giving me a feed per rev of one thousandth of an inch. And that recipe ran beautifully, and I was able to actually turn that into a proven cut recipe number 946. Buying small drills with a standardized larger shank, like 1.8, can make them more versatile and easier to change sizes without finding a specific collet. The larger shank can also help when you have to adjust runout because you have more meat on the shank to tap. However, you can save money by going to a dedicated on-size shank drill bit like the Lakeshore Carbide option. Well guys, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and thanks for following along. See you next time.